Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Yandere Simulator Myths, a series where you guys ask me questions, give me challenges, or tell me myths that you guys have about the game, and I try to answer them in this video. We have a lot of good ones to go through today, so let's get started. First myth of today's episode is something a shitload of people were asking me, so I thought I'd get out the way by doing it first, and that myth is... Jay! Boost your enlightenment to max, then go to the demon dimension. Do they say anything different? Are you now worthy of their power? Well, as you guys can see here, I've already maxed out my enlightenment because I'm savage as fuck. So we are going to go to the demon realm. But to do that, we are going to take this ritual naifu, teleport to the roof, and end Midori Corina's life, though! And we got the blood in there, so we got everything good. And Oka, can you please get your vagina off of my shoulder? Thank you very much. Let's insert the naifu, and let's see if the demons say anything different. First, let's talk to Flamehead, Midori's boyfriend. A mortal here. How curious. Well, same thing as last time. Do you wish to borrow my power? Same thing again. <laughs> Same fuckboy laugh. You are not worthy. And we're not worthy! Return when you have proven that you can wield my power. Okay, I just talked to Dickless Man and the sexy demon girl. They all do not say anything different, so Max Enlightenment doesn't do shit. Hopefully it does something in the future, but as for now, that is debunked. On to the next one. If you boost your racing high enough in the gaming club, can you outrun a teacher or a delinquent? Okay, maybe you can outrun a teacher, but there is no way in fuck that you're gonna outrun a delinquent. They are terminators on crack. So let's boost our racing skill all the way to the max. And after we do that, I'm gonna try to get a teacher's attention and we are gonna try to outrun them. So let's see where our racing is right now. It should be on physical. And physical is part of racing, so I think we can already try to outrun a teacher. So let me do this. Let me go to the roof. And you guys already know what I'm going to do with this knife, foo. I'm going to pick her up. Actually, yeah, pick her up because when you have max physical education and you pick a body up, you can run slightly faster. So let's show and tell. So it was you. It was me. I admit it. I ain't denying it. Stop let's go. Right now. Let's see if we can outrun this girl. Oh shit! No, I don't think so. Come on. Oh fuck. Oh shit! The fucking teacher! Sensei, don't do it to me with the chopsticks in your hair! Ah oh, shit! Ah oh, shit though! Fuck! Damn it! Alright! So max racing, which is basically the same thing as your physical education, doesn't help you outrun a teacher, and I'm pretty damn sure you can't outrun a delinquent. So that is debunked. On to the next one. Jay, I have one! One, kill Midori Goreno. Two, show and tell the delinquents. Three, teleport to gaming room. Make sure you join the club already. Four, play a game and wait for the delinquent to come. Question, will you be in dead alive mode or will something else happen? Okay, let's try that out. We are going to take the naifu. And do I have the naifu? I do not have the naifu. That is embarrassing, Midori. Because I was going to take this naifu and put it in your throat. There you go. And we have to show and tell the delinquents, so let's pick this bad boy up and head on over to our favorite troublemakers. Should be showtime. Go. Okay, let's go quick. What? Okay, there you go, there you go. Oh my god, I can't teleport! I can't teleport yeah, when the delinquent's chasing me! What, what the thought. fuck? Oh my god! I couldn't teleport! Once the delinquent saw me, like the debug menu was unusable. I couldn't use it. What the hell? I might have to drag Midori's body then, so I can use the debug menu, but it wasn't working for me. Let's try that again. Okay, so let me test something out. I'm no longer carrying Midori's body. Let me go right here, and they're not noticing me. Let me see if I can open the debug menu. Yes, I can. Okay, let me try grabbing Midori's hand, and let me see if I can use it then. Okay, so let's teleport. Nope, you can't use the debug menu when a delinquent is chasing you. That is some fuck! No! Oh my god! Yeah, so when a delinquent notices you, you can't use the debug menu. I don't know why. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, let me try something real quick. Let me fast forward time. And then I'm gonna open the debug menu right before they come. Then I'll teleport to the gaming club. So let's do this. What? And there you go. I teleported. Alright, so you can still teleport. So let's use the game. And then I should be getting smacked up by a delinquent soon, right? Or no? Where are they? Delinquent? No? What the fuck? 
Did I do it wrong? Hold on, let me teleport down. Oh, I can no longer uh, use the debug menu. So yeah, I did trigger a delinquent, but they're not here. Let I'm me see where they are. I'm not going down without a fight. Oh shit! Where the fuck did she come from? <laughs> I triggered her, and then she didn't come till later? What, did she like go to a gas station and get a snack before she smacked me over the head? Okay, so now that I figured out how you can still teleport while, you know, triggering a delinquent to come get you, let me try that again and see if we can activate the dead alive glitch. Alright, let me drop Midori actually, because we don't really need her anymore. And then we're gonna trigger the delinquent to come and get us. There you go. Okay, play the game, play the game, play the game, and then... Oh! Okay, there you go. If you're... Whoa! What the fuck?! Let's go! <laughs> I've re-risen from the dead! Fuck yeah! You cannot stop me! I am invincible, bitch! I powered up! Basically leveled my life up! So this is a crazy glitch! Damn! That is awesome! I'm gonna call this the Rise from the Dead gaming glitch. That is so sick. Okay, so if you're playing a game and you get hit by a delinquent, it will look like you died, but once you level up, once you hear that power-up sound effect, you will rise back from the dead, and you will be invincible Yandere-chan. That is so cool. So yes, it does work. It's the Dead Alive glitch, but I'm calling it the Rise from the Dead glitch. On to the next one. One, go to the gaming club. Two, set camera in cinematic mode next to computers. Three, play a game. Four, You'll be sitting on a ghost chair. Ghost chair, you say? Very spooky. So, we are gonna set the camera up like so. Put it in cinematic, and the chairs are gone. <laughs> so, let's play a game. And yeah, we are now sitting on a ghost chair, or Yandere-chan is just very skilled at sitting on the air, and there actually is no chair there. But I'm pretty sure there's a chair there, because I cannot walk forward. That is a pretty cool glitch in itself, see? If I try to walk forward, there is something in the way, obviously, but you just can't see it physically. So, there you go, ghost chairs. On to the next one. When you did the invisible students glitch where you have a student stand in front of Kakona as she's taking her call, do the male students go into the bath with Kakona or somewhere else? Can you follow him? Alright, if you guys aren't familiar with this, I did this a few episodes ago. I can't remember when. My memory sucks the biggest balls. We are gonna get, you know, we'll get this guy to follow us. I think he's the same exact guy we got to do the glitch with where we turned him invisible. So we need to make sure it's Monday. And then we fast forward time to where Kikona goes over to this area right here and she uh, takes her phone call. Wait, this guy's running away. Fuck. Hold on. Let me get you. And you better follow me and you better not leave me or else. Okay, here's the beautiful and lovely Kikoni. So let's get him to stand right in front of her. Oh, that is perfect. Look like he's about to kiss her. Let's teleport. And get this. Fill that up. And showtime, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, what? Really just throw I don't think it worked. So yeah, excited. if he runs over to the locker room with her, then it worked. Okay, it didn't work. He's still running in place. Let's try that again. All right. Let's have the guy stand here this time. There you go. That should be good. They're standing right next to each other. So let's do this shit. Pour it. And... Boom! Yes, got him. Okay, so let's go to the front. There you go. And let's see where they both go. Oh, what the... What the fuck? Where are you going? Hold on, where the hell is this guy going? Okay, there you go. Now he's going to the locker room. So let's follow him and see where this grayed out mofo goes. Maybe he secretly has a crush on Kokona. He's like chasing her. He's like, oh, I can't wait to see your naked in the locker room because I'm a fuck boy. All right, he's going here. And I'm assuming this locker room is unisex because a guy is going in here too. But, nope, he is standing here, and Kakoni's naked, but she's still grayed out. And, yeah, so he just stands here. And let me see if he still stands here after Kakona is done with her bath. Because she has steam clouds coming out, but she's grayed out, so that's good. But this guy, he's still obviously in his school uniform, because you can see the outline of his jacket and his little fuckboy smile. But, yeah, he's just standing here. But let's wait until Kakona comes out and see what he does from there. Okay, so Kakona's done with her bath, but he's still standing here. I don't know why. 
Okay, so once you pour water on Kakona and any male student, they just stand in front of Kakona's locker. They don't get changed or anything. They just stare at it like they're in love with it or something. So hopefully that answers your question. On to the next one. One, join gaming club. Two, get a teacher to chase you. Three, quickly teleport to the gaming club. Four, can you still play games while the teacher is chasing you? Well, like I just did earlier in this video, you can no longer use the debug menu when a teacher or a delinquent is chasing you. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's show and tell, and then we are gonna run to the gaming club, not teleport. Go, 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 go. right now. Okay, stop right now. Gaming club, yes, go. And play a game, yeah! Biology, I don't give a fuck any game! Oh, God! Okay, so you cannot play a game when a teacher is chasing you, but we powered up. Can we move too? Oh, we can't. Okay, but my skirt is like moving all over the place. What the hell? It's like flopping in the wind. You guys see that? Hold on, wait. Let me pull up my camera. Oh! What the fuck? We did it again! We did another Rise from the Dead glitch! Let's fucking go. Let me put this in cinematic real quick. Hold on. Let me move here. Cinematic. And yeah. Everything's all distorted. That is so sick. Okay. So we glitched out again. They pinned us. We got apprehended. But once we powered up, the game continued. So if you guys want to try that on your own, just do the steps that I did. You can no longer teleport though. So you better run your ass off to the gaming club. So hopefully that answers your question. Yes, you can still play games, but the teacher apprehends you, but you become alive again if you pull out your camera. On to the next one. Oh, and every time I put my camera away, Yandere looks like she's about to do the dab, but then she gets apprehended by the teacher again. So it shows that same animation. Look at this. If I just like move this right here, she gets apprehended, pull out the camera, Put it back, and then, yeah, it shows the same exact thing. That is so sick. Okay, but for real, though, on to the next one. Jay, try this. One, go join the gaming club. Two, boost your stealth completely. Three, go peek in Infochan's window. Four, will she notice you? I'm pretty sure she will notice you, but you know what? We are going to try this anyway because you never know what might happen. So let's boost our stealth. And we are going to do this throughout the week from Monday all the way until Friday so we can max that bad boy out. Okay, it is now Friday. Time to boost our stealth one more time for the homie DJ Screw. And there you go. We powered up. So let's go head on to Infochan's window. And maybe she might not say anything at all. Maybe we can sneak and get a little peek in. I know you're there. Run along now. There's nothing for you to see here. Okay, there you go. So we peeked in the window, she still noticed us. Stealth is obviously no match for Infochan, so that is debunked. On to the last myth of today's episode. 1. Make sure it's Monday morning. 2. Put your reputation in the max with the debug menu. 3. Join the gaming club. 4. Play the biology game. 5. Tranquilize Saki. 6. Go to class. 7. Wait for Kakona on the roof that she can speak about her domestic abuse. 8. Look what happens. Okay, it is Monday morning. We have joined the gaming club and our reputation is maxed. So they said we need to play the biology game. So let's go over here and play that game. There you go. How is she playing the game though? She's not even pressing any buttons. She's a wizard, Harry. Now we need to tranquilize Saki. Hello, Saki baby. Can you follow me, please? All right, there we go. So let's head on over to the trank room and trank this skank. So the myth wants us just to trank her. We don't have to put her inside the box. So let's pull this out and ba-bam! And then we go to class, like so. Wait, okay, there you go, go to class. It wasn't appearing for a second. Just boost random stats. And now we gotta head on over to the roof and see what happens when Kakona is talking about her domestic abuse. Okay, here comes my baby girl Kakoni. Let's go around here and let's just listen in and see what happens. Uh, nothing? She's not saying anything. She's just standing there looking at the wall like a Riti. Maybe I'm supposed to put Saki inside of the box because it didn't say that I'm supposed to, but it didn't say I wasn't supposed to. So let me try putting Saki inside of the box and then let me try this again. Okay, I just put Saki inside of the box. Kakona is now back. Let's see if anything happens differently in round two of this thing. Okay. She's still just standing there looking at the wall. Is this supposed to be awesome? Because this is just your run-of-the-mill typical Kakona being dumb shit. <laughs> uh, alrighty then. Let me stand here and see if she starts talking to me about it. No? You're not going to talk to me about domestic abuse? 
Alrighty then. Um, delinquents down there. My wife over there. Doesn't make any sense to me. Here, I'll pretend to be Saki. Hey, Kakona! Did you want to talk about your domestic abuse? Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, let me try putting Saki's body up on the roof and see if Kakona starts talking to that. And she's just chilling there. She's walking in place, actually. And she's not talking to Saki. Come on, girl. Talk to Saki. Talk to Saki. Here, let me grab her hand. I'll be like, hey, it's me. Talk to me about domestic abuse, Kakoni. And then she runs away. All right. I don't know what's supposed to happen there. Is Kakona just supposed to stare at the wall? I have no clue. Maybe you were able to do it in a previous build, but as of right now, I've tried all the possible things that I could to get Kakona to react or do something crazy or funny or awesome, but she just stands there and looks at the wall. But that's going to do it for this episode of Yandere Simulator Myths. If you guys have any more myths, comments, questions, or challenges, please leave them in this comment section below, and I will choose the most creative and unique ones. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and tell a friend to that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!